Where do I even begin? People that are abusive, they will remove any support systems for people. Limit or eliminate contact with friends, with family, with ways to get around. They will intentionally take out every car that's in their name, everything that looks like, oh, it's mine, you can't have it. This is your car. Oh, what, so what's going on tonight? Oh, uh, vehicle stolen. Okay, how guess, long? Um, I don't know where it's at right now. You want me to get my locker? So I thought I would just vlog every day until racist treatment. Day one. Well, day, it's eight months and day one. Right, my kids are fine. I'm fine. I have no notes. There's no warning given to me about this caller at all. This is emotional abuse. I want back. My address mm -hmm. is Jason Forrester. Who's Jason Forrester? A friend that just got out of prison for 10 years. Her friend? The transplant groups. I feel like a video got posted. It shouldn't have got posted. I know it's bad and I won't defend it, but. She is, she's just slipping all out of anything. She's got nobody to support her, she's you know, she's out and around with them, you know. Yeah. But she did that for some time. Um, it could be long guns, could be pistols and everything pointed at the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But she continuously, you know, uses you guys to harass me and you know, keep me up all hours of the night because he is drunk and mad. So, I, I don't really know what to tell you. That's a shot fired right there. I was like, that is, okay. Those videos were made after you moved out. And you were still trying to take the Jeep and still actively using and doing things to hurt me. And I felt as though, like, if I didn't speak out, it just wouldn't have stopped. I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to be arrested. I just want to stop. 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 You don't want it, do you? You're not going to fucking threaten to hit me and back me into a you? fucking corner. Reese, stop! Uh, are you Mr. Sopapa? I'm with DCFS. It never works out for the right side. You understand what I mean? So, it never works out for the person who's trying to do the right thing. Yeah, that's not mine. I don't have a registered hang to me, so. That's not yours? No. There is no forced entry to this house. I hate to say this, but it's almost like th it, it, we're probably going to have to chalk this up. I sincerely believe with everything in me that this is one of the most important things I have ever done on this app. Throughout this year, I have lost sight of why I started this in the first place, and that is to help other people by sharing my story. And over the years, that has come at a very expensive price when it comes to my mental health. Kids, I'm trying to be nice. Mm -hmm. So right now you don't know that she's not in the Jeep. So she. I know she's not in the Jeep. How do you know that? I'm asking you, Jess. If you want our force entry right now in front of these guys, they got to come in here and get me and they'll arrest both of us. That's, well, I'll take one for the team. I'll not, take one for the fucking team. But no, I was watching. I'm telling you I'm no. Watching. You can tell me what you want. But she's gonna make the call. Back up there. So I'm looking at the domestic battery charges that happened uh, March 14th, March 15th. <laughs> hey, I was the judge had to force her to return the Jeep. All right, so she gave it back last week. It went to the dealership. It got cleaned up. Well, that's what she got mad about. And then she started wanting property that she now says she left in the house or whatever else. Okay, when did she move out? <sighs> It'd probably be. She's still got stuff here. Resending her here. Did you what? No, resending her here, not Why her. Why would you do that? Because yeah, I'm fucking playing the game. Yeah, nothing to do with me. Yeah, yeah. You don't care. Are you just You're gonna pass a drug test. What does she say? Once she passes a drug test, she's gonna close. Great. Stole her. Hmm. Here's the point. Listen, the point of this. Did Jessica can't have a baby in jail? Yes, she did. Did Jessica can't come home from jail? Yes, she did. Did Jessica can't do everything she needed to do to get her daughter back? Yes, she did. Does Jessica can't still have her daughter? Yes, she does. Is Jessica can't been clean? Yes, she has. She struggled with alcohol. This call is from a federal prison. And she's trying to do her best as she can, as anyone in life can do. She's going through a fucking uh, um, separation from an abusive asshole. 
And what? I mean, what more can you put this girl through? I'm not answering that. You're good, though? I am. I'm Are you good. safe? You feel I'm, safe? I'm, I don't know. People come to my house. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I've never met you time. before. That's a very strange thing to happen to you. This docuseries is for the ride or die crew. You guys deserve transparency. You guys deserve an advocate and a voice and a content creator that has your best interest at heart that is not dedicated to spewing more hate and negativity into the world. You deserve a true advocate. And I lost sight in that throughout this year. I lost sight of why I do what I do. What's up, you guys? Welcome to episode four. So you might be wondering why he's here. Uh, literally just to keep me on track, and he's my emotional support person because this gives me a lot of anxiety, and I tend to ramble. So he is going to help me kind of keep, you know... Try to help. Yeah, he's going to try to help me stay on track, and also he's really good at holding me accountable and making sure that I'm recognizing my own toxic traits and all of that stuff because I'm not perfect. So what we're gonna do is just have kind of a casual conversation about everything that's happened because I think that's really just the best way to end the series, which is what I'm doing with this episode. I know that it's 2024, uh, but we are leaving all of that in 2023 and just wrapping it up today, so. This is just going to be the most laid back video I've ever done in my entire life on the channel. Pretty much, hopefully. My hands are covered in tie dye. Also, so. So, what do you think our big problem is right now? I mean, me. I'm the problem. It's me. I would just address what starts everything. We already talked about it. Yeah, but everyone, everyone's seeing things differently. So, like, the thing that is like sticking out to us the most right now is Jason. Everyone wants to know the situation with Jason and you know what happened between me and him and where all of that is at. So if you guys have been watching the channel for any length of time, you've probably seen videos with me and Jason pop up. I've talked about him my entire internet career. Uh, he has been my friend for, God, um, like 13 years now. And was your friend was my friend. Mm -hmm. Yep, I um I got into a situation ship with Jason last year, a um, situation ship I didn't want to be in, and that's why I didn't come to you guys and tell you guys, hey, I'm seeing this person, because I wasn't going to get online and say that I was happy and in a relationship when that just wasn't true. I wasn't happy. I knew that it was an unhealthy cycle. And by the time, like it all happened so fast, you know? And by the time I realized like, oh shit, this is not good. Um, it was kind of too late, if that makes sense, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I realized like, oh, I did the thing. I did the thing where I wasn't healed, wasn't ready. I'm not in a good place. And I got with someone at, I, it, this sounds stupid, but kind of on accident, you know, like I didn't plan for that to happen. I didn't mean for that to happen. I don't think he did either. Um, and I was just to, like, to be blunt, I was just fucking miserable. So I didn't want to come online and be like, Oh, I'm happy now. Cause I wasn't, I genuinely was not happy. Some of you might know that he is like speaking out from prison and like releasing everything that I ever said ever. And that's kind of like, it's weird energy. It's weird to me because he saw how negatively all the drama channels impacted my mental health and he saw that I wasn't in a good place. So for him to turn around and do that is just like, I'm, I'm good. You can stay in my past. This is the root of the problem, right? Okay. And I think this is what you had to explain. So like, if you were miserable in this relationship, mm -hmm. okay, they, they, like you're claiming you are. Why so many months after that you're still in communication with him, still texting him, yeah. still talking to him on emails, still telling him that you love him? Like why, why, like if you were ready to leave this relationship and you were miserable, then yeah. like why did all that happen? Like, like can you explain that? Yeah. I know there's a reason and you've explained it to me, but I think they need to learn that because yeah. that's where a lot of people are trying to come at us at, like saying, oh, well, she was writing him here and there. Yeah, of course yeah. she was, like. 
Yep. So and that ain't no secret. I know about that. I've seen right. these emails that you guys are so yeah. crazily tripping on, you know? Yeah. If so, I'm not tripping on it, I don't know why the hell you guys are tripping on it. The reason, the reason that I kept in communication with him is because he was my friend first for a very long time. Mm. I loved Jason. I did. I loved him as a person. I thought he was a good person and I cared about him deeply and I have for 13 years and my friendship and my love for him, that is why I kept in communication with him. That's why I, you know, said, I don't want to be in this with you, but I still have your back. I, you know, I got you. I'll help you out. I'll still put money on your books. I'm not going anywhere. And, you know, I, I kind of got into a habit over the past 13 years that when something was wrong, I kind of ran to him for advice and it, that just wasn't the best decision on my part. And, um, you know, I, I've just recognized that I attract certain people and that is kind of a me thing. That's my fault. It's my responsibility to get negative people or toxic people out of my life and then recognize why they were in my life to begin with, you know, but that's essentially why I kept in communication with him, kept, kept helping him because I loved him forever. He was my friend forever. You made your relationship with Reese public. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, you didn't make your relationship with Jason, Jason public. Yeah. But then now our relationship you made public. So why did you skip that relationship and weren't transparent with it? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I feel like I kind of already said that, but I wasn't going to get online so soon after I ended my relationship with Reese. And also, you know, I wasn't I wasn't in a good place. I wasn't it wasn't a healthy relationship and I wasn't happy. So I wasn't going to get online and say that I'm happy and in a new relationship when that wasn't true. And it was also really soon, you know, and the entire eight months that I spent with Jason, it was so on again, off again, that it was crazy. It was so like, I'm going to prison. I have one week left. I have two weeks left. Every single second, you know, I kind of felt like manipulated to stay because he's about to go to prison, which I knew in December, but he like got all of these deals. Like he got drug court and then he got outpatient treatment and then inpatient treatment and then he ditched rehab like it was just chaos you know and I knew that this was not something that I wanted to be in and I expressed that to him so many times too and he just he acts like I'm you know he went to prison and I left him out of the clear blue sky and that's just not true um but yeah that's essentially it I wasn't going to get online and lie and say I was happy when I really truly wasn't happy do you feel like you you got into it with him over his addiction? What do you mean? Do you feel like I got into it with him? Like do you do you feel like uh did you ever like obviously he was like fucking up and getting in trouble, he's made that publicly known. Mm -hmm. And so do you feel like there's time that you couldn't like spend around him because of that or like did he just ghost you for like weeks at a time or like how that worked? Cuz no. obviously he didn't really live here like that. He had no. his own house. Yeah, no, no, no. He never lived here. Um, so the way that it was, he would just be gone for days at a time, not weeks at a time. And during the time that he was gone for, you know, four or five days before I saw him, well, three, four days, um, he would just be blowing up my phone nonstop. He wouldn't let me relax. He was just very, very aggressive with me. Um, and like, you know me, like, you know, I need my space and like, I am not the kind of person that's like gonna hold on to you like a backpack. I, you know. He was just, he was doing his own thing, you know? And when he was here, he was working on the house. Even when he was working on the house, it wasn't like I made these decisions, you know? Like he hardwired security cameras, which I fucking appreciate. It's amazing that I can see every angle of the house. But then he would do other things like paint a projector screen onto my wall that I now have to fix. Like, you know, he would go through my things all night long when I'd be asleep. And he would just be doing off the wall shit, calling people out of my phone at all hours of the night, doing things, you know, on social media that I didn't agree with, that he didn't even talk to me about. Um, you know, sending our mutual friend to Reese's house was another example. Like, I didn't okay that. It's like, this is what he's doing. This is what Reese did. Now Reese is arrested and I just have to adjust. Um, it was just, I don't know if I'm answering your question or if I'm rambling. Um, it was just chaos all the time. And I was constantly on eggshells, constantly just not in a good place. I feel like he came in and just made my life harder and he made it worse. He did do some things to help me, but he also, you know, he really played off my fear and made me more afraid of Reese. He, he drove a wedge in between me and him. So co-parenting was completely out of the fucking question. And I don't even know if we'll be able to healthfully, healthfully co-parent ever now. 
Um, and you know, it was just a nightmare, but all rooted in the fact that I have to be right or die. I have to be loyal. I said that I loved him. So I have to be chained to him essentially now. And I think that is like one of the most toxic things that you could possibly get into. Like I can love you and still leave you. I am not chained to you because I said that I love you. And if you, you know, disrespect me or my boundaries, I'm good. And I, I never plan on talking about any of this because I didn't want to badmouth him. But he's decided to take that step and try to expose me and once again take food off of my table and try to ruin my reputation, just like all of the drama channels did. And that's energy that I don't associate with. I don't understand it. And it's also, you know, it reaffirms that I made the right decision by getting him out of my life. You know, I don't have any hate in my heart. I just... He needs to go do him way away from me and my family because that's just not the right decision for me. All right. So were you married to Jason? We're going to cut to commercial. 2,000 years later. Because this is what Jason claims. Jason claims that you had to drive him somewhere and you were madly in love with him and pulled over on the side of the road or whatever and confessed your love to him and told him that you got to spend the rest of your, you want to spend the rest of your life with him and you're his person and all this shit. That's what he's saying. And he's saying he just pretty much went with it and agreed. What? What? Okay. I don't read all the things. Um, that's not how that happened. So I was super emotional and I was upset because he was about to turn himself in, which he never did. But he was telling me he was going to turn himself in. So that entire, like the night before, I was super emotional about it. I've never been able to turn myself in. So I was like super like, you know, it just pulled at my fucking heart. And I knew that I couldn't go visit him. So literally just to get prison visits, I got a marriage license. And I'm working on taking care of that. So that's no longer a thing. Um, but it wasn't one of those things where I was like, oh, I'm in love with you. I want to marry you. And so my name. No, I wanted to go visit him. And he made me believe that I wouldn't have to do anything like file for divorce or anything because he's married to his ex, Christy. So you married Jason because you knew that it wasn't going to be like 100% yeah, a thing? Yeah, I thought like, so we got the certificate and I was just making jokes of the entire thing. I thought it was funny because I was made to believe that because he's married to Christy that this would just be null and void and once we submitted... The actual thing to get the license they would just kick it back you know like no you can't do that um and like i i genuinely just believed that i thought the whole thing was a joke so i made his cousin the ordained minister and i thought it was the funniest thing in the world and you know i'm just an idiot um but you know i've already filed to take care of that and make sure that i'm not married to him uh but yeah it was just for prison visits so when you met jason mm -hmm. he tried to tell you that he wasn't in a gang anymore and he was not yeah. active yeah like it was always said that you know he always told me that he was just retired and i never thought anything of it because he's not like running around the street like gang banging or anything like that that's not the situation um you know but slowly over time i did meet more of his people and i i love a lot of his family and you know his people you know a lot of them do certain things within the community and they do charity events and they do positive things so that's what I was hearing when I was first spending time with him and nothing ever seemed crazy you know I'm I'm not a gang member I'm not in a gang um and to him and his people it, it just truly means family you know so it was out of love for for them that I you know did certain things like made shirts or you know whatever I got a tattoo um that is literally just love. It's just out of love. Um, I'm like, I'm like mourning the loss of my friend when it comes to Jason. Like, I lost my friend. I thought he was someone that he's not. And I'm even more mourning the loss of his, um, his family. I don't want to cry. Stupid. I thought that his family was my family, you know? And there's like one person in particular that like, I'm like, I'm like mourning the loss of my friends, you know? Cause I ha I just have to step away. I like, I love them, um, but I can't, I can't be involved in anything that is negative or that's gonna hurt my recovery or my mental health or any.
any of it. And it just is really fucking hard, you know? All right. Another thing to clear up would be the fact that, like, people are trying to say that me and you were talking while you guys were together and that we've been talking for the last two years and that <laughs> when I came out here, I was told that you weren't in a relationship. Yeah. And that we were genuinely going to come out here to film. Mm -hmm. And then obviously that turned into what it is now. Yeah. But when I got out here, you weren't with nobody. So this whole fact that, like, Jason thinks that I was, like, going behind his back. And, like, I didn't even know who he was. Like, she didn't even make that public to y'all. And me, to be personal, I don't even watch her content like that. I'm just going to be honest with I you. So, like, I didn't even see I didn't even see her, like, talking to Jason or posting videos with him. I didn't even know the fuck he looked like. We've talked on the phone a couple of times. Because, like, I've, I've known Burner for years. And he would call me sometimes and talk about certain things or ask about YouTube. And you called a couple of times when I was with Jason. Um... You know, but we really never talked about personal stuff. You know, it was always work. Um, Jason thinks that I was flirting with him while I was sitting next to him. Because what I was doing is he was live and I was just tapping the screen and sending him hearts. And he and just... And what does that mean? Like, explain to them what sending hearts means. Oh, like on TikTok, when you're live, you can send hearts. It's just sending the creator likes. So I would just go through and whoever was live, you know, I'd pop in, say hello send some likes, you know, send some, you know, show my mutual friends some love. And I would just jump off TikTok, you know, I never told him that he has been like my secret crush for years. I never told him that I thought he was cute. Never said anything like that to him ever. I always kept it professional. There'd be times I literally just call and ask you a YouTube question yeah. and you just answer it. And I'm like, all right, cool. Thank you. Or, like, we'd call and talk about, like, oh, that'd be tight to go film here. Or did you see this? Whatever. Right. Like This event. But it, was, it wasn't. We never hit on each other. Nothing ever. like that. And then it's just, like, how delusional people are. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. We, um, we got in the same. I was so nervous to meet you. Like, so nervous. Like, pacing. <laughs> hyperventilating. Into a fucking paper bag. Like a lunatic. Um, <laughs> we, like, got in the same room and just, I don't know. It, we just click, and he is walking into a situation that is not fair to him. Um, you know, and this did happen fast. I'm probably not ready for it, to be completely honest. But no one has helped me more than he has. You know, just recognize, like, ah, actually, that's toxic as fuck. Nope, that's not how that happened. You're being defensive. Like, you're you're deflecting. Like, he's literally telling me in every scenario, like, what it is. And he's so emotionally intelligent that he's helped me. I don't even know if that makes sense. Like, you, you've really well, it's helped just me like, so much here, in life. Here's the thing, like, and it's one of my traits. That, like, if someone's doing, this is one of my traits. If somebody is doing something that I feel that is wrong and I yeah. know it is wrong, I don't care how close you are to me. You could be my best friend. You could be my sister, my mom, my girlfriend, whatever you are. I'm going to call you out on your bullshit. Yeah. Straight up. And, like, I, I expect the same from you. If I was doing something that was deceitful or something that just wasn't right and was wrong, like, I'd expect you to call me out on that, too. And I would respect that. And, like, I would correct that behavior. Because when you say sorry, it means, hey, I'm sorry about this, and I won't ever do that again because I've learned from this and I've seen how it hurt you. So it's like I'm just very blunt about shit. And that's where people get mad at me. Like the whole situation with where everybody's like, I'm threatening kids. Like, bro, I literally took exactly what Reddit does and, and put it into a sentence and said I was going to do it. And now all of a sudden I'm the biggest piece of shit in the world. But like y'all could literally do it for the last year and a half to her. Bring up situations about like her dead family members come into my life and say my daughter's name. And like a bunch of shit. Like you guys are literally trolling me and and using my three-year-old daughter's name to sit there and just talk shit and try to upset me like that just don't make sense to me at all it really don't make sense like i wouldn't do that to you and it's just like it just don't make sense to me it makes no fucking sense who uses a three-year-old child's name to come and try to upset me like that shit is just sick and it's wrong and like reddit is just weird like y'all a bunch of toxic weird fucking people this group of people that is doing this to both of us like it's literally just aimed at me they want to tear me down but they're putting it under the umbrella like we just want to hold you accountable no dude there's a there's a thing there's a basket 
th- my things that I don't want to talk about on the internet. And every once in a while, someone steals something out of that basket of things and they leak it to expose me, to hurt me. And so just clout chase and, you know, they got to eat too. And I understand that. But like, I don't bring everything to the internet. So many things that I did not want to discuss have been leaked, forcing me to make a statement or come out and talk about it. And I just want y'all to know right now, it's never happening again. Well, that, yeah. This that... is the last time you will ever hear me address anything like that. I'm never going to say Jason's name again. I'm never going to say Reese's name again. I'll talk about my abuse story in a vague way. I will talk about what I've gone through and what I've learned from it. But this is the last time any of y'all will get reaction out of me i think you would ask me a while back like well why did you stay in this situation ship that you didn't want to be in if you're that miserable da 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 um he was also threatening me with what he's doing right now he would threaten me the second i would tell him like i don't like what you're doing i'm not happy i don't want to be in this with you he would act crazy he would just threaten to go live he'd start recording me he would threaten to tell reese things that he shouldn't know um just all kinds of stuff like that to keep me in a like a state of like fear and anxiety there's a lot of layers here but essentially i stayed in that because the constant threats and stress and anxiety my love for him as a friend and i didn't want to leave him he was always just about to go to prison so like i just felt like chained to this person um family court i have a new lawyer now um all of those people are out of my life my plan is to move um and just start over fresh you know i don't want to be in the state of illinois anymore if you guys didn't know this like you if you're in family court you have to get permission from your ex to be able to move so i literally need permission from my abuser or a judge has to sign off on it just so that i can move and that's just horrible like this whole process has been so re-traumatizing and the situation with Jason just compounded that compounded that trauma. And I want to make it clear, too, that I never planned on talking about Jason at all because I didn't have a lot of positive things to say. And I didn't want to, you know, just shit on him all over the internet. He's decided to tell you guys that he was physically abusive towards me. He's decided to say all of these things and leak this stuff. And I don't understand why. I genuinely do not understand why. But some people, you know, some people are literally acting like I'm not allowed to leave a relationship. Like, I'm allowed to end a friendship. I'm allowed to end a relationship without that being some big dramatic thing. So this is like the last thing that I ever wanted to talk about was him. So how's family court going? We went to court a few days ago and, you know, we're still just kind of gridlocked. Um, Reese doesn't see the kids often. He is allowed to come visit them two days out of the month. He has missed visits. Um, he missed Christmas. He missed Christmas. Um, and now he's just decided because family court didn't go the way that he wanted it to go in terms of him just getting his way. Um, now he's decided to just hit the pause button until our next court date, which is a month. That means he's choosing not to call his kids for an entire month because he's mad at me, which is just shitty. When we went to court, he did bring his girlfriend so I got to meet her it didn't go well and I am like so mad at myself because I had I could have made that better so you know we I'm in a breakout room so that I don't have to be in front of the judge I don't have to be in the same room as him um and I'm talking to my attorney and at at the end of all of this because we have to refile a bunch of motions that my last lawyer messed up at the end of this I was told that um they have presents for the kids because he didn't come to Christmas and he's going to be out front and we can go get the gifts in my mind. I'm like, say hello to her, shake her hand. It's nice to meet you. You know? And I'm like, like, this is stressful. I'm already like at a 10 with my anxiety because going to court is the most stressful, terrifying thing, especially in family court. And like, he did such a good job of like keeping me calm and making me like laugh through this. Um, because I was just, I was just a frantic fucking mess. Well, we go to leave, and as soon as we get out of the elevator, his girlfriend is by security, and she's like, can we get some cops outside? Can we please get some security outside? We have to exchange gifts, and I'm like, oh, hell no. You, no, you fucked up with me immediately, you know, because now I'm already triggered because I'm in a courthouse talking about my children. It is the scariest thing. Like, you can send me to prison. I'm fine. (laughs) We go to court for my kids different ball game but now i'm like oh hell no i'm zero to prison everything that i just told myself 
be calm. Don't let him upset you. Don't let him trigger you. Shake your hand. It's nice to meet you. Let's come up with a co-parenting plan. Huh? Can we, can we do that? No, it's all out the window. I, I swoosh past her and I like kind of run down the stairs. Reese is at the bottom of the stairs smoking a cigarette. He's like, you're going to get these gifts. And I'm like, yep. And I just, I'm like, please just get me away from these people. Cause now I'm like, I'm about to be surrounded by cops. This is ridiculous. This is crazy. Like it, it kind of felt like, like he's trying to make me out to be the abuser by being like, we need cops to surround her because she's crazy, you know? And I'm trying to process that. It's not going good. Pretty sure I was talking shit running to the car, you know? Um, we get in the car, we go up to meet them for these gifts and I'm like, really? Like, I can't even control it. I'm like, really? Do you feel safe? I was talking to Reese. She goes, maybe. And I'm like, and this is kind of an important moment for me and like my healing. I look at her and she's, she's very small. And I'm like, I was her. I can't, I can't be mad at this person. I can't hate her. I can't, none of this is her fault. I can't have any kind of animosity towards her at all. And I, when I looked at her, it just kind of clicked. Like I was that person. I was that person and I was so unhappy and such in an abusive relationship with him that I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. I was stressed out. So I said to her, I said, you need to eat something and go to therapy. He's a narcissistic piece of shit. She scoffed at that and got in my Jeep. They drove off. Um, that was not the right way to handle that at all. I shouldn't have said any of that. I just sort of said, it's nice to meet you, but there's a cop in her face and I'm re-triggered and I'm just, I'm fucking pissed at how I handled that because it just wasn't a good move, you know? Like, he got his, he got the reaction he wanted out of me, though. Like, he literally was laughing at me, seeing how upset I was because there was cops there. Like, he literally, audibly laughed and looked at the cop like, oh, see? See? And, like, that makes me even more crazy because, like, he knows what he's doing. He knows exactly how to get me triggered. He knows how to upset me, and it sucks. When someone triggers you to that magnitude, it's like you don't even, you can't even control how you respond to it, you know? And that sucks and I've, I've got to do better. I've got to work on that because if this is going to be who he's with, then we need to come together and be a cohesive team for the kids. And it's going to be hard and I don't even know if it's possible, um, but maybe. And I feel like that's the difference between me and Jason is like, Jason would always try to just egg him on and piss him off. And like me personally, I'm like, I don't want to beef with this dude. Like, I don't agree with him. I don't really like the guy, but I still think he needs to be in this kid's life, you know? And I just, I don't feel like being here is like the spot for him, you know? But like, obviously we, we need like a mediator or somebody that the kids trust that can go with them on a visit to supervise them and see how a few of those go. But at the end of the day, I, I'm not I'm not their parent. I can just tell you how I would do it if those were my kids. But it meant the world to me after court when you said I you know I don't want Reese to hate me or be afraid of me. That's not helping. I want him. You know I want us all to come together so that we can be a good team for them. Like that meant everything to me. Everything because it was very different. You know Jason's kind of fucking crazy like he really he really is crazy and um I found out that he has domestic violence charges in his past I never heard about this but he brought over like bins of paperwork and I was going through it and he's got two domestic violence cases one from like 97 and one from like 99 or something like that um and I'm just like 93 and 98 okay pretty sure something like that um and I had no idea I had no idea I just feel like both people that you were just with, especially Jason, like they create problems so that they can fix them. Yeah. They're just like, I'm going to create this big ass problem for you and then I'm going to fix it. And then I'm going to just expect that you owe me something for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like, hell no, dude. Absolutely the fuck not. You, you will never, you can't, you broke me. You can't fix me, you know? And it was, it was my fault for allowing him into my life. And I've learned through therapy that like people pleasing can be just as toxic as narcissism because it, it feeds the ego. And there's a reason why 
the same kinds of people have been in my life. There's a reason why I've allowed certain people to come into my life and I have to fix that. It's also why I had to stop drinking because at the core of a lot of my issues was my own untreated, unhealed triggers and traumas and all of that, and also my drinking problem. That's just what that is. I wasn't allowed to mourn my relationship with Reese and be sad. Like I am mourning the the love that I didn't ever get, the life that I never got, the life my kids didn't get. Like I was with that person for a very long time and like I it's going to take me years to heal from all of the damage that he caused and you know all of the trauma that he caused. It's going to take a long time and I was never allowed to just feel that. So instead of sitting with that and feeling that pain, I just drank a lot last year because it was so uncomfortable to feel all of that and like mourn the loss of this person and the life that I thought I was going to have with this person. Like it was really hard and I'm, I'm still fucking upset over it, you know? But I think my biggest regret is like not leaving sooner because I knew, you know, like, you know, in your gut and in your soul, if this person is a good person and I should have left a lot sooner. I, like my identity was also heavily tied to Reese because I didn't know who I was outside of that relationship, you know? And like, it's, it's going to be a journey for sure. You're so patient with me and so honest with me. And like, you've helped me so much, you know? So I'm probably not ready. You're probably not ready to be in a relationship either. You know, we didn't plan for this. It just happened. And this is the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. And I'm hopeful, you know? I'm not going to make 57 videos about you if we don't work out, I promise. Taylor Swift? I'm not the Taylor Swift of YouTube. Okay. We ever, ever, ever <laughs> came back together. He's a Swifty. So I thought, I thought y'all would like to know that. He's a Swifty that, that loves bath bombs and he likes to call. At least I don't like the Beatles. I'm going to just take that on the chin and act like you didn't say that. All right, name three Beatles songs. Three of them. Oh my God! Yellow submarine. It's my okay. dad's poop song. That's what everybody. Here comes the that's sun. That's the number one song everybody says. That's what. All right, two more. Here comes the sun. You think Yellow Submarine's the most famous Beatles song? Yeah. It's not. No, it's really good. What, you don't even know the song. I, I don't know. It. I just know that like when you ask somebody about the Beatles, they always say Yellow Submarine. Here comes the sun. All right, one more. Exactly what the fuck I thought. <laughs> Uh, we all live in a yellow submarine. That's not the most famous Beatles song. I guarantee you this. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is more famous than Yellow Submarine. I don't know about that. I think it's all that. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. That's more famous than Yellow Submarine. Know, and Here Comes the Sun. You know who's way better here than comes the Beatles? The sun. Way that's better. That's three. Wait, that's three. Fuck you. You know who's better than the Beatles? Elton John. Way better. I like Elton John. I just, he's not Way better. better than like, me. I, when I listen to old school music, I, like, I'm like, damn, Elton John's sick. I, mean, I like Billy Joel. I like Frank Sinatra. I don't know. <laughs> Shit's ass. Okay. Do I think that I should have posted those videos? Mm. Probably not, in retrospect. Um, what videos? All, like the docuseries. I've learned also um, throughout this whole thing that. Um, explaining yourself and having to show proof and receipts, that is just a trauma response. I wasn't believed for so long in my last relationship. You know, I'm like, I know that you did this. Here's proof that you did this. And I would just be gaslit. But I also think because Reese is so narcissistic, like he's a covert narcissist to a fucking T, I think that along the way I have picked up toxic traits. And I think that I need to fix that, you know, and I have a, I have a long way to go. I really, truly do. I also think that if you are trying to dig up something to try to expose me to ruin my reputation, I think that's a you issue. I think you need to heal that because like, why would you want to destroy someone's life because of a relationship they never wanted to talk about in the first place? Why, why are you trying to dig up private things that I've said to help build your career? You are earning money from it and you want to tear me down and all of these bitches that are doing it claim to be in the recovery community. Y'all can keep that energy. It's why I started saying years ago, um, my brand is not recovery. My brand is not prison. It's not mental health. My brand is transparency. That's where that came from, being bullied and beaten the fuck up by the recovery community, you know? And it's like the second that, this is what it kind of feels like to me. And I know I'm not blameless in this either, you know? 
but it feels like from this side, like I'm a performing monkey. And when I don't perform the way that they want me to perform, then they decide to say like, fuck you, you're a piece of shit. I'm, I don't like you. I'm going to make videos about you. I'm going to expose you. And you know, I'm, I'm never going to be a performing monkey. I am who I am. My opinions and beliefs are subject to change as am I. And you know, the things that I have said four years ago, three years ago, even last year, I am growing and changing and all of my viewpoints are subject to change. They really are. Um, I don't suggest anyone goes real life. I, I, I don't suggest that at all. It's been the most brutal thing for me and my recovery and my mental health and all of that. So wouldn't suggest it if you're thinking about starting a channel. You know, I, I also think one of my downfalls is I fucking help so many people to my detriment. And that is a people pleasing thing that feeds my ego that I have to fix, you know? Like, I'm always like, I can fix this person. I can help this person. Sure, you can have all of my money. It's totally fine. Like, did you need a house to live in? You just take mine. <laughs> like, I'm being dramatic. Um, that is a me problem. Allowing certain things to happen in my life, that's a me problem. And that's why I've chosen to remove these people from my life. You know, and none of them will ever make parole with me. I fucking guarantee that. I'm going back to three videos a week. None of it is going to be drama, and I can't wait to start making my content again, which I know I've said for an entire year straight, but I am going to be filming the stuff I used to film, the stuff that I used to enjoy, and um, this ends. Truth never dies. Um, and if you're still riding with me and you've made it this long, I love and appreciate you guys so much. Just thank you. Thank you for being here and not giving up on me and doing your best to tell me that you're worried and try to hold me accountable and just know that I hear you. I really truly hear you and I'm gonna get all the way better. I have to say my thing. What's your thing? <laughs> he doesn't know my outro, he doesn't watch my content. No. <laughs> Told you all this is gonna be like- I really, I, I swear to God, it's not that like I don't wanna watch it, it's just I'm so busy doing what I do that yeah. I don't have time to do what you do. Right back at you. I'm going to end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe. Stay sober. Whatever that looks like to you. Because there's no wrong way to recover. And I'll see y'all in my next one. <laughs> my emotional support animal. Uh -huh. I think I did a good job. You good job. <laughs> so no? Yeah. I think you did. I'm scared. I'm always just so scared <laughs> to speak my mind anymore. I second guess everything. Mm -hmm.